Hello, in this tutorial we're going to talk about organizing our photos within the library module of Lightroom. So in the importing video, um, one of the things that we work through is how to rename files and how to set up your file structure. Um, but I think it's worth mentioning once again that anytime you're working with files or folders um, inside of Lightroom. I think it's important that any changes that are made are done within Lightroom itself and not out on the folder. So here we have the folder of images and for example if we change one of the names out here instead of in Lightroom then Lightroom no longer knows where to find those photos. So just wanted to bring that up one more time and uh, but now that we have photos imported um, let's go ahead and talk about how we can organize those and maybe use some of the ratings and keywords to uh, better suit our needs. So up here you can see we're in a samples folder and as we go through we've imported the photos um, some of them need rotated as you can see here there's a uh, little rotating guides at the bottom you can do that and it'll rotate the image. Another way you can rotate an image is down here and if these options aren't showing up for you on yours there's a little drop down arrow here and you can select um, all the all the different menu items so just make sure that you have rotate selected and then you can rotate an image just like that okay so once you've gone through and you've imported your photos and you've kind of looked through them and they're rotated um, one of the things that I do like the first time I go through images um, as you can see we've got a thumbnail view up right now. Um, that's great for when you're looking through the entire folder but if you are ready to start looking at individual photos then right down here you can go into loop view and that'll just make uh, the image full screen for you. So one of the nice things that you can do at this point is you can use the arrow keys to kind of thumb through all the photos that you have set up. So the first thing that I do when I'm trying to organize a group of photos is I'll, I'll go through the photos quickly and just decide on which ones I'm going to keep. Um, for example, if there are some that are like duplicates or multiple shots of like the same subject, then one of the things I'll do is I'll flag the one that I think is best. Maybe it's the sharpest, has the best color, maybe the angle's better, whatever the reason, I'll kind of flag it. And you can do that by hitting the P key on your keyboard for pick and uh, so you scroll through and say oh, okay I like that and you can notice right here that it'll it'll pop up as being flagged also whenever you hit the P key you'll notice that the flag right here um, becomes white and over here in the top right hand corner I'm sorry top left hand corner of the thumbnail you'll also have a little flag that shows up so you go through and say okay well this one or this one I think I like this one better so you hit P and you keep going through and doing this throughout all the photos so as you're doing this and you're making your selections um, basically this is just the first step in narrowing it down to what images that I might work on um, another avenue you can use this with is let's say that you're photographing a client or some images for a client um, you can have them go through the images and flag all the ones that they like. This is something I usually do when I'm working with a client is I'll go through and I'll tell them flag every photo that you like. Um, we're not making final decisions just if you like the image flag it. It's kind of your first instinct uh, or first impression of the photo. And then once they do that then I'll filter the photos of, of all the ones that they like and we're gonna go into filtering and searching in another video but for now quickly I'll just show you that you know you can filter by flagging and if you select that and now you'll notice that only the flagged uh, photos are in my timeline or thumbnail view and now I'll have the client go through them a second time and this time I'm having the client narrow it down a little bit and this is where I'll use the star ratings and I'll tell the client okay if you like it and want me to do something with it give it a star if you really really like it give it five stars 
And that way I know when I'm going through all the photos of an event or a portrait session or whatever it is I'm photographing for a client, I know that all the ones that they flagged were images that they thought were okay as far as first impressions go. And then I know that any image that they start are ones that they're really interested in purchasing. Um, if they gave it a five star rating, then I know that, you know, this is definitely an image that they're going to be interested in having. And when I go and do my work on these images, I'll only work on the photos that they've liked. Um, I find it easier that way. That way I'm not wasting my time retouching or working on a photo that they didn't like in the first place. So that's how I use the rating scales. Um, then you come to the color scales. So let's say, well, let me turn the filter off here so we have all the images back on the screen. So let's say I'm going through and I'm going to retouch this image. Um, one thing I do is I just pick green as a color that says I'm interested in working on this photo. Um, the client likes it and then by marking it green, it's basically I'm saying that I like it. So anyone that I've marked green means that, okay, these are images that I'm definitely going to work on and retouch. As I go through my workflow and I retouch them, let's say I start with this image right here and I launch it in the Photoshop and I do all the retouching. At that point, I change the color to red. That way I know that all the red files I have in my library are photos that I have retouched or have worked on in some way. So later on, when if I need to do a search and um, pick images out for like, let's say a slideshow or some other reason, um, I know that any image that's red, there is a retouch PSD file available for me to use and pull for that purpose. So that's it in a nutshell on how I use uh, the flag, the star ratings, and the color coding within Lightroom. One other thing I wanted to kind of touch base with is on the uh, right hand side of the screen over here in the library module. These are all the basically all the settings that have happened during the import. You can do some quick develop stuff up here. Um, so like if, for example, if you're going to just export some proofs for a client real quick and you just want to make some simple changes, this is a, an area that you can do that. Um, I hardly ever use it, but it's there. Um, I prefer to just jump over to the develop module where you have a little more control. Um, the next thing down is your keywording. And you'll notice that none of these photos I have in this folder have been keyworded. And that's so I can show you what to do um, if you didn't keyword the photos at the time of import. Um, usually I recommend doing all your keywording then, but let's say um, we want to go and do them after the fact. You can just type a keyword in. So if, for example, on uh, any one of these photos, I can pick, here's the dome, I can select the file and then just type Springfield into the uh, area. And you'll notice that as I was typing, the, it popped up Springfield, Illinois. I just went ahead and clicked the uh, enter button to accept that. And now if I flip off that picture and then come back on it, you'll notice that the Springfield, Illinois tag has been added to that fo photo. You'll also notice that underneath here is a keyword list. Now, if you're going to tag the photos with something that's already in your keyword list, um, there's a real easy way to do it. And also you can add uh, keywords by just clicking that plus button and you can just add whatever keyword you want. So we add a test like that. And you'll see that that now shows up in our list. And you'll notice that it has zero photos attached to it. Um, some of these have several photos already attached to it. But let me show you how you can use the keyword list. If we're going to keyword multiple images, like let's say we want to do this entire folder. Well, you can select the first image and then hit Control A on a PC or Command A on a Mac. And that will, that will select all the files. Once you have all the files selected, you can actually go down into your keyword list and you can click on the keywords you want associated with this, with these photos. So if I click on Springfield, Illinois, 
you'll notice a checkbox there and then now all these have been updated so if I want to click on capital I can do I can do so and they're all photos of the capital so I'll go ahead and do that another thing you can do is then once you've done that you can deselect all those by just clicking or tapping anywhere over in the gray area here and some of these photos are from the new state capital and some are from the old so I can go ahead and click on that first one hold shift and click on the last one here and just select these uh, few photos you can also use the control key and click uh, multiple images that way and then you can go down here and click old capital for that and it will add that to these and now if we look on one of these photos let me scroll up here so we can see our keywording if I pick on that you'll notice that all those uh, keywords that we checked have now been added to all these photos properly if you continue to scroll down on the left on the right hand side having problems with my left and right today all right if you uh, continue scrolling down on the right hand side you'll notice that metadata is also on the uh, available drop-down menus that you have and if you look under metadata that is basically just showing you everything that uh, Lightroom can read from the uh, XMP sidecar file um, that is attached to the folder or to the photo so as you look on it you can see all the copyright information that we had in our uh, preset that we made um, for importing um, but it also has all the camera information and, and stuff like that um, these are all searchable um, and we'll get into how to search and filter your collection of photos in a future tutorial for now uh, thanks for watching